Have you ever wanted a longer or girthier penis? Have you wondered what options are available for you to get that? I'm Dr. Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon, and on today's episode of the Rena Malik MD podcast, we're going to be covering non-surgical ways to increase penile length and increase penile girth. In this episode, we're going to be talking about vacuum erection devices, penile traction devices, fillers, and more. So let's get to it. Vacuum erection devices work because they have a cylinder that creates a negative pressure flow that then draws blood flow into the penis. Now this will create an erection and increase penile size when you're using it. As you're using it, you then use a constriction band that is usually associated with the vacuum erection device to maintain the erection. Now this is FDA approved for erectile dysfunction. The benefits are they're non-invasive. You can do it in the privacy of your own home and it's likely not going to damage your tissues. There are studies that have looked at the ability to increase penile length with the use of vacuum erection devices. Now, the large majority of them have been done on two populations, one of which is if they've had a radical prostatectomy, meaning they've had a cancer surgery to remove their prostate, which affects the ability of those men to get erections and also affects the nerve function. So they're not having normal nerve function to the penis, which makes it more difficult for them to ultimately get erections. And the other category of men is men who've had an inflatable penile prosthesis and are trying to increase their length prior to that penile implant being placed. In both those groups, they have seen some modest benefit when using these regularly for five minutes, twice a day to increase or at least maintain the penile length that they have. So in terms of the radical prostatectomy population, They've seen that men who use a vacuum erection device, they prevent length loss after that surgery. In men who've had an inflatable penile prosthesis or are going to have one, they've seen that it actually allows them to get a longer implant and have an easier surgery if they use the vacuum erection device before. In terms of healthy individuals, they have not seen an increase in penile length using it. Now, I've had people push back with me on this because they said, well, people are using it for 20 minutes a day, or there's animal studies that have shown increase in penile length. And yes, perhaps using it for longer periods of time or in animals, you will see an increase in penile length, but very likely you're going to see a modest improvement and it's not going to be long lasting. And at this point, I really can't tell you that there truly is because there's no scientific evidence that using a vacuum erection device will create sustained improvements in penile length. Next non-invasive option is penile extenders or traction devices. Now, these are devices that are placed on the penis. So usually they have a circular insertion point and then they have an attachment that attaches to the glands of the penis and then it creates tension or stretching of the penis for prolonged periods of time. And this is meant to be constant, gentle stretching. It shouldn't be extremely painful. It shouldn't be feeling like your penis is going to fall off. This is meant to be gentle traction over time. There's actually been several studies done on penile traction. And the early studies looked at using these for four to six hours a day for months at a time. And so it was a very long time commitment. And they did see an average increase of about one to two centimeters in length. So I think when used appropriately, these can safely increase penile length, but they require a very motivated individual who's going to spend a considerable amount of time doing traction. Now you can get bruising, you can get swelling, it can be a little bit uncomfortable um, at times. And so these are sort of the risks with it. In terms of newer data, so there's a new device that has come up called Restorex, and I'm not funded by them, but essentially they've done some really nice clinical data showing increases in penile length, specifically in men who've had prostatectomy or men who have diabetes and have had a shrinking of their penis over time due to likely lack of blood flow to the area from the diabetes. And they've seen about a centimeter increase in length when using it starting from about 30 minutes a day up to 60 minutes a day. And so not this four to six hours of routine, but a little shorter period of time and they have seen improvements. So I tell people, if you're thinking about doing something for penile lengthening, this is a cost-effective, non-invasive option that you can try at in the privacy of your own home. But realizing again, that this is something that requires dedicated time and effort. And we don't know after you stop using the traction device, will the penis then shrink back to some degree? 
Next up is injectable fillers. Now, injectable fillers can come in a whole variety of different flavors. They can be silicone-based. They can be autologous fat transfers. They can be oil-based. Now, the only one that has reasonable safety data in my mind is hyaluronic acid. And typically, they're used more often for girth enhancement rather than length enhancement. They're not going to essentially increase length necessarily, but they may increase girth. Now, there have been studies that have shown some improvements with these fillers, particularly the hyaluronic acid fillers, but usually they require injecting smaller doses of hyaluronic acid than modeling manually. So trying to sort of get these in a good position and then adding more sequentially over time. When you add too much all at one time, you get more of a lumpy, bumpy result, which is not as desirable. Now, in general, these do have some risks. They have risks of bruising, swelling, nodule formation, and even asymmetry and pain associated with the injection itself. I do think at this point in time, we're starting to see more and more people offer hyaluronic acid fillers. I would love to see more data on this space. I still haven't seen a lot of the data on the newer techniques of girth enhancement. And I think uh, it would be wonderful if all these people who are performing these uh, procedures would actually show us true data of both good success stories, which we hear many of, as well as complications. But generally, I think if you're using hyaluronic acid fillers, and they are you you're using a reputable source that's using small amounts and trying to take their time to get you the best possible result then you may see a benefit but do know that fillers are short lived generally these last for 18 to 24 months because hyaluronic acid is a naturally occurring substance and our body will break it down now it's really important to understand if you decide to get fillers what is being injected some of these fillers have had devastating complications upwards of 70 5% complications with very serious issues, either requiring surgery to get them removed or um, having feeling disfigured or dysmorphic after having these fillers placed. So please do your research if you're going to get these done. They will not increase length, but they may improve girth when done appropriately. Before I move on to surgical techniques, I want to review the European Association guidelines on penile size abnormalities for men with body dysphomorphia that were released in 2023. These guidelines are specifically for either men who have congenital shortness, they've acquired penile shortness because of a surgical procedure or some other issue, or they have body dysphomorphia or essentially small penis anxiety. And so they looked at these techniques, both non-surgical and surgical, and put together guidelines based on the evidence available to them on how you should proceed. But I think we can apply the analysis to anyone looking to enhance penile length through any variety of means. Now, in terms of the things we've already discussed, they do mention penile traction devices, and they read specifically that overall penile traction therapy seems to be effective in lengthening the penis in both the flaccid and strut state with minimal side effects. So in terms of vacuum erection device, they state one study that was done. Again, we don't have a lot of data on healthy young men, but this one study looked at men for six months and did not see a change in penile length after six months of use. And so they say basically data is sparse. We can't really make a recommendation. Now, what about hormones? You may wonder, can I use testosterone or HCG or FSH to increase penile length as an adult? And the answer is there is no data supporting the use of these medications causing any increase in penile length after puberty. And so likely the receptors are no longer sensitive to these hormones in terms of elongating penile length. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode of the Rena Malik MD podcast. If you are enjoying this, please do me one favor. Leave me a rating or review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify so that people can continue finding my content all around the world. And as always, remember to take care of yourself because you are worth it.